right. Um, to April 24th, the Finance Committee meeting. Um, present are uh, Julie Olofsson. Brett Cooper. Mr. Strobel. Um, Ms. Bell. Ms. Haynes. And uh, welcome to Mr. Lellick. All right. So um, I see our, our first thing we're going to start with is a... Uh, um, TSA nationals, or I'm sorry, reimbursements for for nationals for any anything. For any so let's talk about because just as a back to give a little bit of background, um, at the beginning of the school year, we um, we had some discussions about um, the way we were giving a little bit of money to help offset the costs of nationals for uh, folks that are mostly paying their own way, but we were trying to give them a little bit of uh, financial assistance for being able to, you know, make it to nationals in something competitive like FBLA or TSA um, or, um, obviously, the, I'm just trying to think of the things that I can think of off the top of my head. And um, we were finding that we were getting some very weird requests for reimbursement that um, were problematic. Let's just leave it at that. And so we were trying to think of a way to streamline it for students so we can still offer assistance to them, but maybe wouldn't have to have so many, um, have to say no to so many different uh, reimbursement requests for specific items. And that was um, one of our, we, we talked about several options that might make sense going forward, but we are getting into the period where people are going to be, um, you know, making decisions about going to nationals. And so students really do need to know how much money that is going to be provided. And um, I've, I actually saw that the advisor for one of the clubs had already asked yeah. that, that, you know, he remembered we had discussed about discussed streamlining to simplify the reimbursement process and what would, what decision we had made. So um, I, I think that instead of providing up to $500 for a mixture of food and hotel, to do $500 in a hotel, it's a lot more straightforward. It's a lot more easy to prove where that money went because we'll, we'll just have the bill from the hotel. And well, we don't... The only question I have is, do nationals run shorter than five or six days? Um, I think four. So do you do $100 a day for the hotel? That would work. Yeah, we could do that because that would work out to be relatively the same um, if we were, we were already doing a per diem for food. Right. Yeah, I think that that would make sense. <clears throat> That way, if there's a national that is shorter, they're not getting a whole five. Just a hundred, yeah. So just a hundred dollars a day per well, per hotel. student. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do y'all think? Would they be forced to eat at the hotel then? Because how else would it appear? It depends on the. It depends on which event we're talking about. Like well, you no, know. The food isn't included. I'm just paying for their hotel. And it's and you know and we're and we're and we're also trying to make a general decision on. Um, all clubs that have like a national competitive situation. So it depends on the situation, you know, whether whether it's um, like, for example, I remember several years ago, the um, the 
food um, situation was they were in the middle, they were at a hotel in, in, Bal- in Baltimore Harbor. So if they, 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 if they wanted to, they could leave and go to like 25 different restaurants and they might have, you know, I didn't go. Um, so it didn't have to be eating at the hotel and being like, you know, a captive audience. Um, so but for giving a hundred dollars per hotel, I mean, I don't know. I travel some, where do you get a hotel for a hundred bucks? No, no, we're not trying to give them the total cost. We're trying to Sunday make it, Sunday. making, Sunday. making it like, yeah, so that the students so have to pay less. Whether the hotel is 150 or 75. I don't think you're going to get a hotel. No. I agree. I'm just. I don't think now usually, often, but you know, and usually, like for example, like for the for the regional regional competition, the the per night cost per room was in the ballpark of 450 dollars. Now. Some of the students were three to a room, and then so that was like divided, you know, so it was $150 per kid per it night. It makes sense to just eliminate all yeah. the ag. I agree. That's a good brainer. And it's the, same, it's the same amount of money that we're covering, and we're, but we're not dealing with, well, you know, are we, are we reimbursing for the two kids that ate chicken nuggets and the parents who had like steak and shrimp, you know, uh, yeah. I'm not on this committee, but what groups do you pay for nationals? We pay a percent of, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but anybody that goes to national. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, FBLA, F- the FBLA would be another one. Is it just for academics or, or sports or I don't know? I don't think there was a situation where they specified. It could be for anyone that goes into No, it's, I actually asked um, Ms. Schmidt to verify that they're getting some money for the bowling, the bowling trip to nationals. But when they did it, when they went in 2018, they got, they got a small amount. I think that they requested that all of their money went toward uh, the travel. But I mean, like the middle school too, or something like a Florida school, they didn't get anything. Was it nationals? It was internationals. Oh, okay. Same concept that they should have. That they, I mean, they had a return. They had a. I don't punt them down because I honestly, the worst there's so many. There, I do not know who's going to nationals unless I see it. Email. Do they know that this is available for them? They should. Yeah, they should. I mean, this is part of the board of I know, like TSA, I just had a student activity meeting with some of the teachers that were all came together and wanted training. So mm-hmm. I did, you know, they all know about it. And the people that were in that room. <clears throat> that makes sense. Yeah, we've, we've had it on um, our agendas to pay for portions of it for FBLA. This has been for this. Um, or after, so. I apologize, so, um, Mr. Hello. Yeah. Mr. Jarek is joining us. I just wanted you to know what that was. Um, hi, we're in the middle of a discussion about reimbursement from the general fund for students that go to national events uh, to compete, okay. who've earned a spot at nationals. Um, okay. And um, so under the same under the same rules that we use for other reimbursements? No, we're, no the, the talk, okay, so going back to what we just said, you know, in the past we've, we've reimbursed a, a certain amount per student for their hotel costs and a certain amount, and up to a certain amount per day for their um, food. But dealing with the, dealing with the um, receipts, for the food was getting to be a little onerous for the business office. So the business office, you know, we talked about this at the beginning of the school year, um, had yeah, we, we offered had the option and the, and the option that they've, they've asked us to consider is um, to instead um, offer $100 per student per day for the hotel bill. Toward the hotel bill instead, and, instead and, of and what partly if, for what the, the. So that would be inclusive of the room and food. No. 
it would just be the hotel, but it works out financially to the same amount that we were offering before for food and hotel. Right, but it takes out the onerousness of trying to decipher the food receipts. Yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. So, um, yeah, my, um, I, I do. I mean, if it's a, if if it's a, if it's basically a break even and it's less work for the business office, then yeah, 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 yeah. correct. Yes. With having to go back and forth to make sure the receipts were appropriate. It's right. It's a lot more, it, 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 it makes everybody's life easy. Yeah, anybody who's ever, who's, who, who I've ever heard of that have go, has gone on to, like, nationals, I always tell them to make sure that whoever is, whoever their supervisor is, whether it's the principal or the, or the, or the athletic director, Make sure that that is being gotten for their students because it is available. That's our, you know, we can't. I'm not sure how to get the word out. If they haven't heard it from the board of judges, how many times it's been? It's been on the board of judges since 2016 forward. We've we've had these discussions a lot of times. I don't know what the best advice is, but all any national or international event that there is that stipend available to assist because I know most of them do fundraising. Now, one thing, one thing I will ask you is if this is an event where there is no qualifier, like if you just get a chance to go, if you can afford it, I don't know, it, you know, if, if, we, if, if they have not, like, won a state championship or... Uh, That's where it's supposed to be. It's as if they earn, this, and they earn the right to go to nationals. Yes. Not just paying for the paying to go to nationals because you can go if you can nationals afford it. Nationals is just what it is. It's just what they call it, right? If you want a spot to go to nationals or internationals, that's my understanding. Right? So yeah. You can't go if you're not competing, right? What's that? I mean, they can go if they're only but only if they're competing. I mean. Yeah, but the, there are some there are some things that are a national competition where there is no like state qualifier. Gotcha. You know. But they compete while they're there. Okay. That's yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, anybody who anybody who um, you know wins wins either like a regional or a state um, county um, and then wins a slot. Like I was actually speaking to Do Dr. Cooper about this about our two um, very good um, um, wrestlers. But there is no there is really no nationals for for them. It's just up to the state level until they get. To college, so I was because I was asking, is there a nationals for them to compete in, and there really isn't for wrestling. So technically, your expenses want to go up because there's no spoilage. I mean, I'm sure there's right. people that would pay for their hotel, forget their receipts, don't want to bother with the receipts, and they just get the money up. So now, 100 percent, you're going to get the money up. And it's going to, we're going to save an expense from mm -hmm. inside. So I'm not looking from that perspective. I'm just saying technically our expense is going to go a little bit up more, but it's going to be a lot easier for everybody to control. Yeah, and for parents. and like for for um, I know right we we don't currently have any kids that are um, eligible to go to nationals for Odyssey of the Mind or anything like right. that. Um, but I know we had some kids that were eligible for FBLA. I don't know where nationals is, but you know we're going to have a different number of students say, yes, I want to go to nationals that have qualified for nationals when nationals is in Maryland versus like TSA's nationals this year is in Kentucky. Last year it was in Texas. So you no, know, even if we, you know, take a little off the top, you know, we're not, a lot of kids aren't going because it's a significant financial expense, even if we do pay a hundred dollars a student per day. It's a good idea. I, um, so do we have to make a change to a policy or procedure to... Isn't that a administrative kind of Yeah, it's kind of So we can just make the change. Yeah. change yeah. Um, Ms. Bell, are you okay with that change as well? Yeah. Okay, do, do, nothing needs to be approved by the board, right? Okay. We're just going to go through it because it's... Uh, you agree, Mr. Jerick? Yes, does it have to go through policy? It does not, Break yeah, because it's an administrative guideline or a, a managerial guideline. Did I get any of those words right? 
Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if we if the if the committee says we're going to make the change, um, they can just make the change. There's nothing that has to be changed in policy. Right. So it's just a change at the administrative level. Okay. Right. Right. All right. Um, moving on to long-term care. Okay. So we have an opportunity. Okay. It's an opportunity for our insurance carrier. We just wanted to bring it down for informational purposes. Uh, what's going on at the state level? Uh, what they're looking to do is they're looking to offer uh, long-term care at a cost. Uh, could be no cost to the district. It'd be something that uh, each individual. Would would want to uh, accept or decline. Um, it's up there to be voted on. Uh, it's nothing that's approved or done yet. So we just put a couple bullet points together. Uh, what they're saying is once this is approved, uh, they're looking at taxpayers uh, to avoid a 0.58% income tax uh, on their state tax. But, uh, Right now, what we're looking at, we're looking at Trustmark Universal. We also look at uh, another insurance carrier. And the costs are fairly high. Uh, looking at, if you're 45, you're looking at $83 a day. And I think the other insurance is around 93 It's something that we should be informed about, you know, to look into, that this might possibly be happening. But the consensus right now is it, it hasn't been approved at the state level yet. So uh, if it does get approved, maybe we can look at it and offer the right to do it. So let me, um, let me ask a que um, question. So what our, our um, insurance provider is saying is that it might be something, if it's voted on at the state level, that they will be, that, that our our employees will be required to uh, procure either on the pr on the private market or from. Oh, so that means that they have to be able to have it offered through their job. It would be offered through the job if they wanted it, or they might put a penalty or a tax on it. And then you just have to show proof that you were buying it on the on the market. Correct. Okay. So it's all new right now. Or if you're forced to do it on the market, that's when the tax comes in. Yeah, that's when the tax. That's when the tax. If you go to the market, that's when the tax. That's this legislation that's up there now. Sure. Has not been voted on yet. Okay. So Is it in committee? It's Is it still in committee or? I forget where he said it was. Okay. But it's not. Governor Mifflin has already opted into this. So we're looking at other um, districts in our community and watching. Are they? And kind of waiting. Are they? Is this? Um, this is outside the consortium. Yeah. Okay. It would be something we would offer as a benefit. Right. The costs are ridiculous, but I don't know what it's like out there on the open market either. I kind of want to. He wants to get more information on what it looks like in the future, but, it's just but be prepared. It's just an offer so something, somebody can pick it up for additional dollars. Julia. Want, correct? Hold on one sec. Ask the question. Is that correct? I mean, this is just, we're going to, this is something we would just have in the stable, like, like in your cafeteria plan. Uh, I want that. Well, that's yes. 93 bucks. Yeah. If you don't want it, there's nothing there. Exactly. But no, if it, if it becomes law, but if it comes law, it becomes law. People have to either buy it or prove that they have it somewhere else or else they get a tax penalty. It's a mandated insurance policy. Could be, well, and could we be. And then Mr. Jarek had a question. Go ahead. What is, is this long-term care insurance for? Who? Um, it, it's something that our insurance provider has shown us how much they could get that long-term care insurance to provide to our employees. And it's and um, can, would you be able to email it to Mr. This? This to Mr. Jerick, so just so we can see what the num. She, they just want us to be aware of it at this point, but I'll set, have them send you the numbers that were presented. Um, okay. But so this is legislation that could be enacted at some point where it would be a requirement for all employees to have either through their job or on the private market. So they're just telling our insurance company is just showing us how much people could pay as our employees um, out of their pay to get this insurance. It's not something we're offering yet, but it may be something we need to consider offering if it becomes law. 
It Got it. Say it again. It doesn't create a select committee. It is in committee, Mr. Mr. Rittenhouse. <laughs> Found out that it is still in committee, so it's it hasn't it hasn't even been approved out of committee yet. Yeah, so it's in committee, but it's something that I just I know Governor Mifflin has already picked it up. I don't. So I Governor don't, Mifflin is already offering it to their employees. I just don't think we need to start. Or he doesn't think we need to start just yet. Yeah, I got you. Just kind of wait and see where that goes. I agree with that. What do you think, Mr. Jerick, to just like kind of like hold hold on to this info and wait and see? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Unless it's going to be mandated, why should we incur? Yeah, the cost? that's in. And what we wouldn't incur a cost. We, we wouldn't incur a cost, but the, our employees would. You know, it would be an opt-in, so our employees oh, wouldn't have to purchase right. it. Right. Okay. So they'd either have to right, like they would have to show proof of insurance, or they would be mandated to get it. Yes. Right. Yeah, but if we did it before, if we did, if we offered it to people before it became law, it could just be a simple opt in if you want it and ignore it if you don't. Right. Yeah, but um, I would like to play wait and see. I don't really want to take that on at the moment. How do you feel, Mr. Rittenhouse? I agree. What do you think? Sorry, there's other carriers who can look at as well. So yeah. as we okay. go through the process and as we find out what, what happens with this legislation, it would be the right thing to do to offer it or give another option for employees if it becomes a law. Yeah, Ms. Haynes and Ms. Mr. Lulick just wanted to make sure that we knew what was what could be coming down the pike. Got it. Um, okay, debt financial representative. For the debt financial representative, I'm thinking about bringing in uh, a new person get this information, it's called Concord Financial, and they look at our debt, they look at uh, what interest we're paying, principal, and uh, on our AFR at the end of the year, they more or less put up uh, pricing and everything together with that state of force. So for informational purposes, just bringing someone else in to uh, get some advice. Um, so right now, I currently like our current debt service company. However, um, there, our current debt service company has said to us that there isn't a lot of movement we can make with them for several years. Is that correct? Well, right now, it's not RBC anymore. He moved to another uh, firm. So it would be the person with his loop of that for But he has moved to a new firm. Okay. So, so, so we don't know if we don't so know if he'd be his, his new firm could offer us. He does, but he, I already know like. The firm he's dealing with, there's ammo filings, there's all kinds of different things that kind of left to this office to do. Or do we have to sign a contract with a new company just to get a second opinion? No. No. No, they don't, they don't, there's not a contract. It's like an audit. You don't sign with an audit either, an auditor. It's just a financial representation. We can quit him anytime we want and go to the next one. If you don't like what he has to offer, we can stay with the one we want. With the, that's kind of what I'm wondering. You know. I, like to try. I, would, I would recommend a second set of eyes because we've had No, I understand that. Done. I just didn't want to cut ties oh, no, no, no. with, with no, the old guy still go back if we don't know what the back. new people have and to he's say. He's a different company. He, I forget the name of the company, but he switched a while ago. Okay. Well, yeah, we and, and we haven't had any movement. Yeah, so he's, no the rates. there hasn't. The rates have not really spoken to a need for yeah, movement yeah. anyway. Yes. Right. I'm thinking right. the, rate, the rates are high right now. So I mean, right. it'd be no consolidation, no putting debt out. It'd be none. It would just be looking at what's existing and what new ideas he would have. So it would just be a new set of eyes coming out to take a look at you know, what we have. Who, who does our current debt service? Um, um, well, say his name again. The current guy. Lou Verdelli. Lou Verdelli. And he was with RBG? RBC. He was with RBC, but he is now with a different company that I don't know the name of. That I don't know the name of. So, so, so. Raymond James. Raymond James. Um, so, but this other company, Concord. That um, that Miss that Mr. Lelig would like us to at least have an audit and a proposal for maybe some debt savings um, would be a different company, but we don't have to sign a contract with a new company just to have him look at our books for for look at our debt look at our debt service and see if we could save. There's no charge. 
Nope. And it's at no charge. That's that that's that was where. No brainer. I just, you know, because if you were like, if there was a charge involved, and you're looking at there's a, there's there's a really small opportunity. That, he, would, he would have to have a magic wand to be able to change. What do you think, Mr. Jerry? You know what I mean? So, but to get involved. Well, I don't disagree with, with Kevin as far as, like, if it's not going to cost us anything, it doesn't hurt to look under the hood. Yeah. Have we had issues with the current company? Because no. Raymond James is a pretty reputable outfit. Yes. Uh, we And we, I, I, I've liked our current guy. Um, and I've thought he's done, he's, he, he's done very well with, for us. But what um, Ms. Haynes and Mr. Lelig just said is that there might be some, um, um, debt, um, what's the word I want? Um, some report, so yeah, reporting some, some, some options with Concord that weren't options for him, that he might be able to make some suggestions that for vehicles that, that weren't available with the other company. That's the word I wanted vehicles. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything to have him look under the hood. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling. How about you, Ms. Bell? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Good idea. So, and this, um, did, I say, did I say that this is Mr. Lelick's first, first uh, meeting? Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, been a busy couple weeks, I'm sure. Week and a half. Um, any questions, comments on from the committee? on um, finance. Any public comment? Hi. Shane Koppel, P30, Guys Comrade. Um, my question is on the activity fees in sports and uh, clubs. Mm -hmm. I think you guys should look what's covered in state different than what's covered out of state. So if you make it to a state championship for football, baseball, and basketball, uh -huh. any sport, is all the transportation paid for by the school district? State now? I don't think, I don't think so. so, not for state. So if, if uh, just say our football team makes it to state and they have to go play Pittsburgh, how do they get there? The school district pays for that. Um, I guess it's just been so long that we don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I don't know the answer. I, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It should be equal. If everyone's paying an activity fee, then if, if it should be consistent among the sports and clubs. So Shane, I can answer your question. PIAA, PIAA sport is paid for by the school district for transportation, and, and that is uh, budgeted by them. I do feel like we have a team that can compete at that level. We're going to get close to that level. Just like our bowling team's transportation was we, for we, the state. For the band, for the bands, for that big All in the budget. No, he's saying that, that um, clubs are not covered in the same way at the state level because the still students have to pay. An activity fee to be part of the school district's uh, clubs. So if TSA makes it to states, they, the school district should be budgeting some money, well, the, the cost for them to get there to states. Whatever we we pay for regionals and, and the students pay for states. That's that's the way. That's what my understanding of the way it is. And and this was always my problem with the activity fees. Mm -hmm. You should stop charging activity fees for clubs that have to pick up uh, a huge portion if they're successful when they get their their whole part of being involved in this is to get to that level, mm -hmm. and then they get to that level. And they might not be able to go because they don't have the funding. We but do. We do you, often. We do offer fundraising opportunities, and there are. And there are also. You know, there is always the Blazer Foundation that that can be. We can, we can tap them if if there are folks that have issues. I'm just saying. You know. I, I know, it, I know yeah. And and not and not what is required by for us from us by PAAA is a lot different than what's required by you know TSA and um, FBLA and things like that. They are their own organizations with their own dues. And they're um, they're not school they're not school um, affiliated 
functions. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? But does PIAA require you to pay the students to pay an activity fee? I don't know. <laughs> no, they don't. That, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of my point. That the, the whole purpose of the activity fee, and uh, you're pro we're probably involved a decade or more ago, yeah. when, when coming to the school board, was to offset the cost. Because I think the football budget was around $80,000. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball was like thirty, And then you got down to these clubs, and they were, well, under a thousand dollars some mm -hmm. and they were all paying equal and then if they were then the kids that were paying the same as the kids in the sports mm -hmm. when they would achieve something great and be able to move to the next level the school district would have to try to find there wasn't a budget there wasn't a portion set aside for these kids to make it mm -hmm. and my point is if you're not going to cover their dream at the end and only cover the dream at the end for the athletes. I don't think they should be penalized with an activity fee. Just let them, let them use that money, if you're not going to cover it, to go towards, you know, their busing. I don't think we should be paying for any food at all because if, if, you're, if we're paying, playing Twin Valley, we're not taking the kids out for no. lunch. No. Before yeah. that. Right. No, so, I understand. So why, why there shouldn't be a stipend anyway for, for food. But the transportation, if we're paying, and it's expensive. I mean, I came and complained because the, the baseball team was playing a non-league game four hours. It was a four-hour bus ride. Mm. One way, the tournament, and then four hours back. Mm. And then they were complaining that the kids were too tired to do homework. And, I'm like, why okay. are we paying for this? But if I will, I will say that um, uh, not to interrupt you. You know, I mean, it, um, that I know that during um, the years, the years leading up to, and then um, the years during COVID, we we've had we had um, some very serious within the um, inner uh, extracurricular uh, committee. I've sat in. I wasn't on that committee, but I sat in and listened to a lot of discussion about. Um, do these do the do those fees benefit us? Um, you know where what is it being used for? How how much money does it really bring in? Does it you know is it is it covering the cost of that advisor for all of them? You know um, like this year, um, you know our kids in the chess club, you know I think they got second in the county. You know they they let they went for they went. For a lot more events like within the county they can't move on to states because they weren't first but what that's like a club what what, what does that look like you know right. what, but but you know it was a thing that i was thinking about you know and i know we've been thinking about how we fund those things so i think that that is a larger conversation to have for sure and um during covid the discussion was why should there be nobody's nobody's participating in anything? So maybe we should get rid of all the barriers, you know. And um, so the conversation, of course, is different now. Right. But I think it's still a valid one to have. Like, is it really giving us what we what we want, and is it really giving the most benefit to the students? And you know, okay. um, I, I know what your answer is yeah. for that, but um, but you know, I would like to hear. No, I you know, I like, I would like to hear some data behind it for sure. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the activity fees if everyone's being treated equally. I, understandable. If there's, budgeted, if there's money budgeted for football and baseball and basketball and to go to states mm -hmm. in the budget and it's not being used, you know, why can't that money be used for clubs that, that make it to nationals? I hear what you're saying. And that was my complaint with the athletic director back in the day. It's like you're budgeting this huge expense. Not the current one for anybody yeah, else. Yeah, back in the day. If you're budgeting for a huge expense that never gets used. Yeah, that's fair. And they're, they're like, well, if it doesn't get used, it doesn't get used. And I said, but you're taking that budget money away from things that it can be used for because it's in the budget. So I think maybe the activity fee should go in its own, its own fund. And then whoever makes it to wherever, you draw the money from the activity fee and use that to pay for 
And that works until we have a really good year for everybody, right? Right. You know, so so we would have we would have to do some some homework as to whether or not there is an overhaul that can be had. It's hard to budget on something like that. Yeah, but uh, but uh, his, 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 but his yeah, but his comments are valid, and you know I, do, I don't want to you know I but it is it's a bigger conversation than the next five minutes, which is how long you have. <laughs> My complaint was always for, you know, everyone's uh, paying an activity fee, and some people benefit from it, and some people don't. Uh, and I think if, if you're charging it, it should be all inclusive. You know, I will say some of the, for some of the clubs, for some of the clubs, the activity fee is just enough to cover the um, the um, advisor stipend for some of them, and that's it. Right, you know, but but for some of it's but some for, for some of them you have more students involved in it. We there is there is more money that's being brought in for sure. But prior to the activities being being in place, mm -hmm. it, it was just across the district. Mm -hmm. So right, you know, it's something. It's what we do. What what's going to be good for our student body? Mm -hmm. And you know, if if a kid can succeed, a student can succeed. And go on to that next phase. There should be money, and I'm talking. This is in state. Mm -hmm. Nationals is, you know, I don't think football, any sports are going national. It's the states, and it's it, and it's over. I'm talking in state. And there's some parents that would argue that their kids aren't involved in sports; they don't want to pay that cost out of their tax dollar. So I get, I get right. Both so sides you have of, you know what I mean? senior citizens complaining they about. have to pay property say, tax and they don't have. I get it. Everyone has the same yeah, argument. It's the same you argument, can, exactly. So, I get it. but it, but it does, it does bear some, some digging, drilling down. Yeah, yeah I think that, that was, and also with the uh, with the retire not the retirement fund, the. Uh, Extended long term care. Long care. Three more minutes. What happened? Three more minutes. I, okay. What happened? Is that through all state employees or just teachers? Will that go into effect for like. If it does go into effect, it'll be for everyone. Okay. Yeah, but but we don't know. Right. Don't know. I was yeah, just curious if it was just a, a teacher. When was the last thing you, some, you got something you expected out of Harrisburg? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I can say that I work for this. They're my boss, so I can say that. I right? <laughs> Anyone else? All right, that was a good discussion. Um, so we're um, we're gonna um, adjourn, and the um, the regular meeting will start in a couple minutes.